All right, we're going to take you worldwide today. Amen. 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 Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 24 from the New King James Version. I will be reading. And I'm going to start with this. I've, I've heard Brother Marty mention this before, so it would be good to read these things. Back up to verse 18. Verse 18, Galatians 5, 18, and it reads, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice, everyone say practice, practice. those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is no law now for our verse this is what we're going to be looking at today and those who are christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you for today's message i thank you for your anointing to teach and preach with clarity we thank you for your anointing also to open our ears to hear and to open our eyes to see who we are in Christ. I pray that you would enlighten the eyes of our understanding so that we would know our position and our place in the cross and at the cross, in the family of God. Father, we thank you for our rights and privileges as sons and daughters of God, and we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, those in agreement said amen. 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 See, I'm going to go ahead and use this mic for now. But at God's answer, the cross if you're taking notes and uh, uh, I plan to leave you with three PowerPoints to take home with you so that you can study this out that you can improve on on what I'm gonna feed you today uh, I've already eaten some of it and it's delicious uh, I think you'll like it as well uh, but we're dealing with the cross a continuation from last week and uh, uh, you know we have a lot of ills to deal with in this world have a lot of things that we have to face, a lot of uh, uh, crisis, a lot of hardships and things like that. We also have a lot of things within. Now, that's the biggest thing right there. I mean, everybody has to deal with things outside, you know. Uh, uh, but when you're talking about in Christ, uh, uh, sometimes you think that, that coming into or becoming a believer means that everything is going to be uh, easy. Everything's going to be like a bed of roses or things like that, but not so, not really. You know, uh, keep this in mind that we have this treasure in earthen vessels we have this treasure in earthen vessels it's almost as if God played a trick on us you know uh, uh, it's, it's a beautiful salvation that we have but he put it in this earthen vessel and this earthen vessel you know uh, uh, has flaws in it and see before we came to Christ uh, we put ourselves through some things that our flesh hadn't forgotten <laughs> you know what I mean uh, see you have a temptation that doesn't doesn't bother me one bit because of your past experiences and whenever you get around that temptation, you start sweating and, 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 and getting nervous and things like that, where I can be around the same thing and it doesn't bother me one bit because I have a different set of experiences in my life. So you can hold a piece of crack out to me and it wouldn't bother me one bit. You know what I mean? I can take, put it in my pocket and forget about it. You know? uh, but to a crack addict or a de delivered crack addict, although they're delivered, if you come around them with it, it won't be long before the temptation pulls them back in. The reason why is because our bodies, our flesh, this earthen vessel, it hears the call of the world. You see that? It hears the call of the world. And not only that, it doesn't forget. It doesn't forget where it came from. See, that's why whenever we backslide or we break fellowship with God, we go back to doing what we used to do. You know, because it, it, it comes from our flesh. We just read it through Galatians uh, 5. Uh, 19 and 20 right uh, our flesh remembers those things and we put ourselves through those things 
uh, that, that our flesh remembers. So that's a thing that we have to deal with. God put this beautiful salvation and perfect salvation in an earthen vessel. Amen. That's right. So we have a war within ourselves. We have a war within ourselves. And the only response to the evils, the only response, response to the pressures and the claims of this world is to apply the blood of Jesus shed on the cross in your life. It's the only way to, to deal with that. Come on, that's right. Only response. You see that? I want you to look at Galatians 5.24 again. We don't have to read that whole section that we just did. But Galatians 5.24, And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Well, what does that tell me? Glad you asked. It tells me that Christians, that is, we who belong to Christ, regardless of our denominations, we who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So that leads us to our first PowerPoint today. I want you to write this down. God's provision, his provisions, or his provision is always two-sided, comprising what God has done and also what we must do. You see that? God's provision is always two-sided, comprising what God has done and also what we must do. See, there's a God with side and there's a man with side. You see that? There is a, 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 you could say, a legal side and then there's a practical side. From the legal side, God has done everything that he needs to do for our redemption, for our salvation. Whatever it is that we need, it's been done once and for all, eternally. Amen. And when you say it eternally, when, what I mean by eternally, it means that he did it as if we were the only ones. You see that? If you were the only one, Christ would have came and died for you. That's right. And that salvation would be just as complete for that one individual as it is for the whole. All of us have, we have a complete salvation. We have it. As I've said before, we have it in an earthen vessel. Uh, but we have it nonetheless. We have it. And since we have it, uh, uh, legally, from God's side, in the supreme court of the universe, God says that this belongs to you. Now, that's the legal side. The practical side is, remember, we say amen to it. We say thank you to it. We receive it. We confess it. We come into it by way of confession. This whole thing started by a confession. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. Amen. I'm walking away from the camera. I'm, oh, I'm not? Okay. All right. All right. I know Marcel has a way of setting that up before I had to stay behind the pulpit. And I do this by habit sometimes. Uh, but the Holy Spirit does it, I think. It leads me to talk to certain ones and say certain things at certain times. Uh, we, we, we veer away, but you know, bear with me. Pray with me. <laughs> All right. Amen. So his provision is always two sided. You have a legal side and a practical side. Uh, and from the practical side, that's where we usually have the problems. It's never on the on the on the Godward side. It's always on the manward side. So we have to work out those problems uh, through the word. Uh, the word tells us how to receive from him. The word tells us how to be practical. And if we'll put it in, into practice. If we'll just be doers of the word, we'll, we'll experience the blessing of the word. That's right. Amen. Amen. We'll experience the blessing of the word. I want you to look at Romans chapter 6, if you would, with me. Romans chapter 6. Verse 6. When you get there, I'd like for you to say, yes, I have. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, Romans sir. chapter 6, verse 6. It says, knowing this. That our old man was crucified with him. Our old man was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Knowing this, that our old man. Everyone say old man. Old man. Old man. Old man. Our old man was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Now make note of this. That when Jesus died on the cross, it was our unregenerate man that was judged. Okay? The part of you that's unsalvageable was judged. Jesus was on the cross. His physical body was killed. It was destroyed uh, uh, in our place. See, when you got saved, you don't have to turn there, but, but I will say this to you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man, or therefore if any man be in Christ... He's a new creature or a new creation. 
He's something that's never existed before. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that the new you isn't the part of you that we can see. You already know that, right? right. Uh, you still got the same clothes on before you were saved. The minute you got saved, it didn't change. Not your clothes. That same old bunion is still there after you got saved because that didn't change. You see? And there's nothing that we can do to be pleasing to God uh, in and of ourselves. Your righteousness is as of filthy rags. They're filthy rags to God. Anything that you would try to do that was good, it would not, not be good enough to meet God's standard. That's why we base our faith not on what we do, not on what we've done. But we go oh, not even based on what we don't do. Some people say, I don't smoke, drink, or cuss. It's like, well, it's still futile because it's based on what you do and don't do. See, the gospel message, your faith is not based on anything to do with you or, or what you don't do. It's based on what Christ has done. Amen. That's you see right. that? Remember the legal side? You've heard the legal side preached to you, and now your faith is based on the legal side. And being based on the legal side, I no longer walk by my feelings or my past. I walk by what the finished work of Christ has accomplished for me at the cross. Amen. You see that? This is God's answer to uh, the evils in this world. See, when Jesus died on the cross, it was our unregenerate man that was judged. Your flesh is judged at the cross. See, Jesus incurred, incurred the judgment deserved by the criminal in <coughs> you and me. You see, the criminal in you and me is what caused the judgment of God to pour be poured out on Jesus. See, there's an enemy within me. I got to look within to, 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 to see who the culprit is. I'm usually the one holding me up from my progress. Thank God it's just me. Because if my progress depended upon you, I'd be in trouble. You see, if your progress depended upon me, you'd be in trouble. I got so many things going on in my life, I ain't got time to think about you all day. You see? You got so many things in your life going on right now, you ain't got time to think about me all day. Uh, you got to think about what's going on in your life. You got to deal with the enemy within you. I got to deal with the enemy within me. Because that is that enemy that got Jesus crucified in the first place. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. See, Jesus incurred the judgment that, deserved, that was deserved by the criminal in you and me. So how does that affect me? How does it affect me? Well, when I look at the cross, I see where I should have been. Whenever I look at the cross, how many of you remember who Barabbas is? Mm -hmm. Remember Barabbas? You know, it was it was custom, Roman custom, that uh, uh, that one prisoner be released once a year. I guess it was. You know what I mean? So that another person can 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 you know? Well, just one person getting released. Pilate thought that he was doing something good. He thought he was being smart. Like, surely this man didn't do anything wrong. So what I'll do is I'll excuse myself from it. And I'll use that, that uh, privilege that we have to release a prisoner. Now, Barabbas was an insurrectionist. He was a zealot. Everybody say zealot. 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 Now, you could say that Barabbas and Jesus were the Malcolm X and Martin Luther King of their day. You see that? Jesus was the, of course, Martin Luther King brought a method, message of peace. Barabbas, he brought a message of by any means necessary. They both were oppressed by Roman soldiers, by, by the Romans in general. It says in the fullness of time Christ came, and that means that religion had reached its peak, and they were under Roman oppression, you know, the fullness of time. So here it is, under Roman oppression, some people wasn't taking it, like Barabbas. Barabbas would kill somebody. He'd kill a Roman. He didn't mind. You know, he was a cop killer. <laughs> you could put it like that. I'm not saying that Malcolm X was a, a cop killer, but, you know, that's another story altogether. But uh, uh, he was, the, he was the, the, the zealot. He was the one that was aggressive. He was the one that felt like we got to do it by force or it's not going to happen at all. And uh, anytime you see some of the gospel movies, you see Barabbas. He looks all beat up and, and he looks pretty bad. Well, it makes sense. If he was killing... Roman soldiers, I'm sure that they didn't like each other. So they probably took advantage of, of every opportunity to, to whoop up on Barabbas whenever they got a chance. So surely this cop killer uh, uh, would be the one crucified and they let Jesus go, right? Instead, they let Barabbas go because they hated Jesus so much. Did you know that religion, if it had its way, it would kill God? 
Jesus didn't have any problems with any sinner. He didn't have any problems with anybody who had a, 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 a colorful past. He had problems with religious people. See, so I shy away from religious people because, you know, God has something against them. You know, it's because of not really worshiping. They want to be seen of men and things like that. You know, you read about it for yourself, Jesus' problem with the Pharisees. But he didn't have a problem with people who knew where they were. You see that? Uh, people who knew that they were they were sinners. You know, he had compassion on them. You remember the parable of the of the two men who went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. You remember that? Uh, the the Pharisee he went to the temple and he prayed within himself. He says he said within himself, you know, I thank you God that I'm not like this tax collector over here. <laughs> That's what religion does. But here's the tax collector. He he wouldn't even lift his head up to heaven. He wouldn't even look up. But he, instead, he beat his bride, beat his chest, and he said, he said, have mercy on me, Lord, a sinner. Jesus said, which one do you think went away justified? Of course, we know. Uh, the answer is obvious. It was the one who was asking for mercy, knowing who he is. See, God, God can have compassion on, on you, when you when you know where you are. When you come to the end of yourself and you're honest about who you are, God can deal with you right where you are. And thank God for, for Jenny's testimony this this morning because uh, that that reminds us of where we've come from you see that and it's good to remember where you you've come from and where God has taken you to and remember God is not through with any of us yet amen amen see so when I look at the cross I see where I should have been uh, Barabbas is me you know what I mean I deserve to be up there Barabbas deserved to be up there but instead Jesus didn't just take my place he took Barabbas's place <laughs> you see that Barabbas, the worst of sinners in his day, and Jesus died for him too. Nobody even knew it. They were totally unaware. Awesome story. Awesome story. I, uh, I remember when uh, uh, the first few times I'd been around uh, First Free Will, I remember uh, Marty and Kurt said something in Bible study that I'd never heard before uh, about, about uh, uh, how people don't pay attention to the gospel. Uh, you remember that parable that you told? I don't mean to put you on the spot like that, but the reason why I bring it up is because it reminds me of one that fits this situation right here, where a, a true story, you might have heard this before, where a conductor, a railroad conductor, uh, he worked a drawbridge slash railroad, uh, he would let the drawbridge up so the ships could pass underneath, and then at a certain time he would let it down so a train can go by on the top, real dangerous area. Uh, this particular day, he had his son with him, uh, at work and a uh, small boy playing around and things like that while dad is doing his, his job Well, it was coming time for the drawbridge to be let down so the train can go by and he couldn't find his son Well, eventually he found his son, but he was in a bad place. He was stuck in the gears of the bridge and uh, And it was time to let the bridge down so that the train can go by he had to make a, a, a decision like, do I save my son and let all these people die on the train, or do I let the bridge down so that everybody on the train can be saved at the expense of my son? Tough call. He made the tough call. The bridge went down, and he crushed his son. Unbeknownst to the people on the train, he could see the people on the train driving by or going by on the train, and some were reading the newspapers, others were eating, had their headphones on or whatever, you know. Nobody, any, nobody was aware of the sacrifice that just took place to save all their lives. Isn't that like today? You see that? There was a sacrifice that took place so that all of us could live. And, and a lot of times we travel through life unaware, uh, unappreciative, not knowing the sacrifice that the Father did in giving us his son. Amen. See, when I look at the cross, I see where I should have been. So write this down. Here's your second PowerPoint. Our old nature was crucified along with Christ, yet God's provision in Jesus must be applied to each individual life. Amen. That's right. Our old nature was crucified along with Christ, yet God's provision in Jesus must be applied to each individual life. So what I mean by this salvation is eternal. He eternally did it once and for all. That means that he did it as if we were all with if you were the only one here you have to make that decision as an individual you can't ride in on mom and dad's faith or grandma's faith grandpa's faith 
You have to have your own faith. You have to hear the word. You have to hear that message. And you have to respond on your own. On your own faith. This is an individual thing. You see? See, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. And having taken their position with him on the cross. That's what happened when we crucified our flesh. See, Galatians 2.20 uh, uh, puts it really well because it personalizes it for us. Look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul says, says it this way. He says, uh, uh, here we go, verse 20. There it is. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. That's powerful right there. See, that personalizes the accomplishment of the cross. When you read that right there and make that your own, you're personalizing it for yourself. You see that? I live, but not me. It's actually Christ in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. Faith in or faith of. You could even say that. The faith of the Son of God. I like to put it that way. You know, His faith, my faith, we join our faith together. We are of like precious faith. The apostles put it. We have our fellowship with God the Father and his son Jesus and with the apostles as we go through the, the word together. You see that? Uh, here's something that's noteworthy. Uh, the work of the cross is also multifaceted. Did you know that? The work of the cross is multifaceted. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first, it involves what God has done through Jesus' death on the cross. And then second... It involves the uh, uh, the cross involves what it must do within within us within me. That's what it does. You see, uh, our old nature has to die. Right. It can't be redeemed. It has to die. Our old nature. Uh, those old desires. See, here's the thing about it. This is how you know the New Testament works. See, for the believer, well, I put it like this: for the non-believer, the non-Christian, the unregenerate person or man or woman, uh, when they sin. It doesn't bother them. When they see it, they might even brag about it. <laughs> you see that? But when you're born again, God is now giving you a new spirit that's alive to him. And see, this is where that war takes place. See, he's put in you now a new desire. See, what's changed is or are your want-tos. Your want-tos. Now you want to please God. You see that? The problem is... You might still have the same behavior as you did before you got saved uh, because of an unrenewed mind. You see, it's the mind being renewed that changes the behavior. That's right. You see that? Yeah. It doesn't do anything for your desires. Your desires are in place. God wants you to have a desire for him, and that's good. He says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. What is hunger and thirst? Hunger and thirst is a strong desire. You see that? He didn't say you have to be righteous. He says, you're blessed if you want it. That's good. So how can I want something I don't want? <laughs> he has to do that for me. You see, if you're a new creature in Christ, now you have the want to. You see, I have the want to from within. The problem is I, my mind might not be renewed, so the behavior lines up. See, my behavior has to line up with my want to's, but the only way you can do that is by being renewed to the Word of God. Amen. You see that? Uh, once it's renewed to the word of God, now we can walk in harmony with God. It's possible to walk with God Amen. like we were, we were singing about today. He wants us to walk with him and talk with him. He tells us he's, that, that we're his own. I like that. Uh, that's an that's, that's a awesome revelation in that song itself. Now make note of this, that God has provided the means of this death, but Jesus said that any man who would, would, would follow him must do two things. Anybody know what those two things are? I'm glad you asked. Number one, you have to deny yourself. He says you have to do these two things. Deny himself and number two, take up his cross. Here it is again. Deny yourself and take up your cross. Uh, scripture references if you want to write these down. Matthew 16, 24 is one. Mark 8, 34. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And Luke chapter 9, verse 23. If you don't want to take my word for it, maybe you'll take God's word for it. <laughs> All right. So he wants us to <clears throat> deny ourselves and to take up our cross. Those are the two things that any man who's going to follow Jesus must do. 
He has to deny himself and take up his cross. Now, what does our cross that we take up consist of? It consists of two things. It consists of two things. First, it's the place where our will and God's will intersects. It's the place where our will and God's will intersects. And second, it's the place where we die. You see that? It's the place where we die. And remember that God will not impose this death upon us. He won't, he won't force it on us. This is called the free will Baptist church. See that? So he's not going to force his will on any of us. It says that he desires that none perish, but unfortunately some will. You see that? He didn't want you to be sick, but unfortunately some will. I'll give you an illustration on that, you know, uh, when you're talking about sickness and disease, you know, as far as God's provision is concerned. You know, I said before, there's a legal side and a practical side, right? Uh, a legal side. The legal side is by his stripes we were healed. Everybody say were. Word. Word. Now were. Is that present, future, or past tense? Past. Past. past tense. Past tense. Okay then. If it's past tense, that means that that's something that happened back there. Mm -hmm. Says by his stripes he right. healed us. We are healed or we were healed. If we were, then we are. Agree? Uh, the problem is we, we tend to agree with our symptoms or our bodies or with the diagnosis that the doctor gives us as opposed to what the word of God tells us. You see that? Now, I know it says by stripes we are healed, but the doctor said that I got this. And then once, once the doctor said that we have it, here's the funny part about it. We might not see it, but because the doctor said we have it, we say we got it. We got it. We don't have a problem believing what the doctor says, but Jesus says that you have healing based off of my finished work. <coughs> if you want to have that, all you have to do is say what you would do about the doctor, but don't say the doctor. Say Jesus is my doctor. By his stripes, I am healed. You see that? I don't care what the symptoms are telling me. I'm going to believe what the word says. See, that's fighting the good fight of faith. You're fighting where the word is. You see that? That you can't have faith without the word. So it makes sense that if you're going to fight the good fight of faith, you're going to have to do it with the word of God. Amen, that's right. So it will help to know what the word says so that you'll have something in your arsenal against the devil and all his tricks. He's going to come at you with some symptoms. He's going to come at you with some disorders and diseases and things like that. But you have the word of God on your side. And if you'll step into the word of God, you'll be on God's side with you. See, and if God be for you, who can be against you, right? See? So it's the place where we, we die to ourselves. And God won't impose this death on us. So I'm going to give you your final PowerPoint for today. And we'll be closing up. We'll be closing up. All right. Here's your final PowerPoint. Write this down. We can choose not to die, but we cannot follow Jesus unless we do. We can choose not to die, but we cannot follow Jesus unless, unless we do. That's right. Amen. See, if you're having trouble following Jesus, those of us who might be having trouble following Jesus, maybe you want to consider something. Maybe it's because you haven't taken up your cross. Maybe that's the problem. Well, what can you do? Well, let me make it easy for you because that's what, that's what teaching does. I want to make it easy for you. Here's what you can do. You can consider the cross in one of two ways. In one of two ways. And this will make it easy for you or it will make it hard for you. It's your choice because... Free will, right? You can either look at the cross like it's a place of execution and torture. And that'll make it hard. Or you can look at the cross as a place of release. Release from the old man. You see? Thank God that he always provides a way out. He always provides a way out. And because he always provides a way out, it uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we'll take it. But if you can see it the way it is or see it for what it is, knowing that it's God's provision to give you a way out from the old man, then you're, you're likely to take that, that, make that decision when you come across that crossroads. You see that? <clears throat> but if you continue to look at the cross as a place of, of torture and execution, it's going to be hard for you to follow Jesus because you're not going to get up on a cross where you'll be tortured. <laughs> you see that? It's not a place of torture as much as it is a place of death. And those who 
our Christ have crucified their flesh, Amen. their evil deeds. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, I'm going to leave it open for a few Amen. questions and comments. And, and by the way, when I do leave it open uh, for you, I'm going to pray first for the, uh, uh, you know, for our audience that are, that are listening to us on YouTube right now. And uh, be, after I do that, I'm going to leave it open for questions and comments. And for those who have to leave, feel free to do so. Uh, and we'll dismiss shortly after we do our comments and questions. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's message. We thank you for the cross, which is your answer to our problems. Father, I pray that you would cause this message to come alive in our hearts. We thank you that your word will not, uh, will not return to your void, but it will accomplish the very purpose that you sent it out for. And we give you praise for it. One man plants, another man waters, but it's you who gives the increase. And I thank you for the increase. I thank you for our faith being made strong because of this message. And I thank you for confirming the word with the appropriate signs and wonders to follow. And we give you praise for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Questions and comments. What do you have for us today? Did you learn anything today?